Wouldn't it be cool if there was a plugin that allowed you to add some delay, some modulation, and some stereo width to your sounds here in GarageBand? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the free and very cool fake take plugin from Rob Jackson. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and welcome back to Studio Live today. Let's dive in and check out this awesome free plugin. To download the plugin, you're going to want to jump over to the App Store and search Rob Jackson Fake Take. Tap on the app and hit the blue Get button to download. Once downloaded, you'll be able to use the app standalone or in an app like GarageBand, you can come in here, tap on the mixer icon, plugins and EQ and hit edit and then tap plus to add as a new plugin. Go to audio unit extensions, scroll on down to the F and tap on fake take. Hit done and there you can see it's added to our track and to access the settings, just tap on the icon. As mentioned up front, fake take is a double tracker, which means that it adds delay, modulation and stereo spread to your original signal and it's a tribute to the old automatic double tracker studio trick and I've showed a similar trick that takes a long time in a previous video but this can do the same thing with just a couple of taps. Let's listen to it on this guitar without any changes just at 50% for all settings. It sounds like this. Pretty cool. If we compare that to the original sound by turning off using the active control at the top, let's take a listen. Turn it back on. And back off. So you can hear there, it's adding that little bit of delay, that little bit of modulation and some stereo spread. Let's go through and explain what each of these controls do. The first setting we have here on the plugin is delay. This sets the base time of the fake take. Low settings can be thought of as tighter or more of a slapback style and higher values are a looser kind of feel to our delay. Let's start with this down the bottom, play back the track and turn it up. So as you turn up the delay, you can really hear the definition between the original sound and the delayed sound. So if you want something a little bit more ethereal and loose, you can turn it up. If you want a tighter kind of delay, turn it down. Let's leave this one down around 20%. The drift setting is the amount of delay time modulation, and this is actually applied to the original and the processed signal. If we turn this all the way down to zero, you'll hear no modulation, and as we turn it up, you'll get more and more. Let's leave this at zero, hit play, and we'll drive it up so you can hear the difference. So if you're going for that more processed kind of sound, you can turn the drift up and add a lot more modulation and a lot more color to your sound. And finally, we have spread. So this is the stereo spread at zero. This is going to be dead center. And at 100%, it's pushing it hard left and hard right. So your original and your delayed sound are gonna be on opposite sides of the stereo spectrum. Let's start with this down the center. And once again, we'll vary it and move it as we go and you'll hear it wider out the sound. So once again, like all of Rob Jackson's plugins, very simple controls, very easy and very intuitive to use. And you get those three cool effects all within one plugin, stuff that could take you literally hours to do if you needed to manually dial in all three. And again, all of Rob Jackson's apps are just so simple to use, so intuitive and so useful. I can see myself using this on guitars, vocals, drums, all sorts of tracks. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's grab this lead vocal and solo it here. Once again, we're going to tap, go into our plugins, edit and tap on to add this one right all the way down to fake take, tap it on, hit done and tap the plugin. Let's now try a few different settings with this. Let's first go for a bit of a slap back delay with just a little modulation and just a little bit of stereo spread, a little subtle kind of sound on this one. How it for you by the tree in the school 
not bad, yeah? You get that really cool kind of doubled up sound without having to grab your microphone and record it again. I think we need a little more delay. I'm not feeling all that much modulation, so let's drop that all the way down and let's give it a little bit more stereo spread and see what this sounds like. How it for you by the tree in the school, the tree in the school. Pretty cool. Let's bring it back into our mix and see what this is going to sound like. Not bad at all. But what if you want a really heavily affected vocal? You want to go with that sort of 80s neo wave sound. Let's just turn these all up to 11 and see what's going to happen. Have you had a happy day? In fact, I can hear this working well on these backing vocals. So let's add these to the backing vocals instead. Once again, edit and we'll remove the effect EQ. It doesn't do much. We've told you that before. Jump into the audio unit and grab fake take. Hit done. And now I reckon if we dial these, in fact, let's go 100%. Let's see what these backing vocals are going to sound like with 100% of this plugin across all of the settings. Uh, wouldn't advise this, but let's find out. Have you had a happy day? I mean, that's pretty cool. If we listen to the difference, let's take a listen to the original. Sounds like this. Have you had a happy day? It's fine, but by adding this plugin in, it kind of sounds like there are two voices. And with the stereo spread, let's bring it back with our original vocal and take a listen. Have you had a happy day? Definitely a much fuller sound than the original one without the fake take. And again, we probably wouldn't go that extreme, but it's worth listening to. I like to turn plugins up to 11 and then dial them back to taste. What do these both sound like now back in our mix? Have you Maybe a little too much on the drift and the delay there, but yeah, a fun one to play around with for sure. Let's try a different instrument. What about drums? Now this track has some fairly basic drums and they don't have a whole lot of depth to them. Let's take a listen. Yeah, could definitely benefit from a little processing. So let's check out fake take on these drums. We're gonna hit edit again. We've got plenty of room on this track because we can use this on audio or MIDI tracks, of course. Pretty much anything you can throw at it. And of course it works on Logic Pro for iPad, any other DAW, and there's even a Mac version. You can use this everywhere. Rob's done a great job. Let's tap on this one and dial in some settings. So this time I only want a very tight delay for the drums, just a little bit of modulation, but I'd like a a decent chunk of stereo spread. Let's take a listen to this now and see what it's done to this drum sound. Turn it off. Very cool. One thing you'll probably notice is with the processing, it can turn the volume down a little bit. So it's worthwhile just keeping an eye on that because we'll need to turn these drums up to bring them back into our mix. I think the stereo spread's a bit much. I'm actually going to use this really subtly by turning these down and just giving a little flavor. Let's once again, take a listen to the difference here. This is with it off. And turn it on. Yeah, you can hear you almost sounds like a bit of a double kick drum there. So let's turn up the drums a little bit, bring it back into our mix and see what this sounds like. Yeah, pretty cool. You definitely do need to keep an eye on that volume though. As you saw there, as soon as you start adding processing, and look, it's not just this plugin, it's any plugin. Anytime you change the stereo spread or you add any sort of delay, it can actually reduce the overall sort of gain or volume of your sound. So a simple volume adjustment can definitely help with that. One final test, what about this piano? Now I think with this piano, I really just want a bit of stereo spread. So here's the cool thing. You can use this plugin and only just turn one thing on. So let's add fake take and let's turn it on here and if we only wanted to use the stereo spread we can turn everything else down and then turn the spread up let's listen to this piano and i'll just gently ease up the stereo spread
you can hear there that it gets such a fuller kind of piano sound. And I could even do the same thing and add it to this low part of the piano as well. So yeah, you don't need to use all three. You can use any combination of the delay, the drift and the spread and just get the sound dialed in exactly as you want. So really, not only is it free, it's kind of three plugins in one. As you can probably tell, I'm pretty impressed with this plugin as well as the other two free plugins that Rob Jackson currently has available. If you'd like to learn about those, you can check out the links down in the description. I've covered all three of the free ones and I'm about to cover a bunch more Rob Jackson plugins. So go over to the App Store, check out everything that Rob has on offer over there. Reasonably priced and high quality apps. Hope you found this one useful. If you'd like to learn a heap more about creating, recording and releasing your best music, check out the links in the description and I'll see you next time.